Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You're always most welcome. Today, another ICM kit review. Something quite interesting, I think. The World War II US military patrol. So I think we're going to get some figures uh, in 135th and uh, I think it's a GMC truck. We'll, we'll find out more. Let's have a read. This one is kit number 35599. It says... At the end of 1941, the U USA was already a well-deserved world leader in the production of various automotive equipment. <clears throat> this was facilitated by the most powerful production base in the world. During the Second World War, only 2.3 million military trucks were manufactured actually in the USA. American Army vehicles embodied advanced design solutions. Why does it say only? Sorry, I'm just... They use the word only. Well, I think they mean we're only manufactured in the USA. Army, uh, Army vehicles embodied advanced design solutions defining the world level of automotive design technology solutions, defining the world level uh, that, that was copied elsewhere in general. In America, the main consumer of automotive equipment was the Ground Forces US Army, which operated several types of trucks. Mainly, four-wheel drive G7107, one of the representatives of the G7100 military series. Uh, despite the fact that most of the cars are, this, they call them cars instead of trucks, I just want to warn you, I've noticed that this is a Ukrainian thing. Uh, most of the cars, trucks, <laughs> of the series are supplied to the Allies as part of the Lend-Lease programme, and some of them are used in the US Army, for example, in the infantry, sapper and communications units equipped with machine guns, such, ca such cars, trucks, could also be used for patrolling. This box contains an unassembled kit. Yeah, so just something lost in translation slightly there, but it's not a problem. So, we know what they mean. Let's have a look at what we have got. And this is another one of these kits that you, ICM have very kindly donated. So, I've got to be, got to be nice, careful what I say. Uh, oh, sorry, on the other side, I missed this. On the other side, we've actually got, we've got four figures now. They look really good. Look at these. Now we're talking, and I do like the ICM figures, they're usually really nice. So we've got one that's driving, one that's seated, looks like he's looking out the back, one that's leaning over the side, and one that's standing up. Okay, very interesting. So, I'm trying to release this now, I've got my knife back. It went AWOL for a week or two, didn't it, anyway. <laughs> Is that it? All released? I think we are. Now, okay, we just have the... Perennial battle now to try and get into the ICM box within a box. It's like a, a, a mystery wrapped in an enigma, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, I think I've got it first time. Yeah, the, the people laugh at me because of my rubber gloves. Oh, my gloves. Um, this is where they really come into their own because I can get into things that are really tricky to grip like that. First time. Oh, now yeah, this looks really impressive. Let's have a look. So we've got one big bag, and then a second bag with the figures in, okay. And then we have got our... Uh... Now, somewhere else is going to distract us, isn't it, I think? It's that over there. Okay, so, uh, of course we have the usual uh, ICM colour call-out, telling you which uh, paint you need. It's the olive green 1068, that's the one. Also, it shows you the whole many, many ranges. Um, tells you about the coloured primers and all the different ranges of their acrylic paints, which is a really good guide. Excellent. Nice start there. Uh, are there any decals with this one? I think there, there would be. Oh, yes, there we are. They're at the front. There we go. I'll look at those first. And ICM's decals are usually pretty nice, I've got to say. And sure enough, so basically it's three white American stars and lots of uh, number plates and uh, stencil registration numbers on the side. It's a Chevrolet, in fact, I've just realised. It's a Chevy. Uh, not General Motors as I thought it was. So it's a Chevy truck, uh, and there's all your US uh, fairly basic markings, it has to be said. Okay, so I'm going to it on one side for a minute. Let's have a read of this. I think we just read this. Yeah, it's exactly, it's a replay of what was written on the box, but it does give us a bit more data here. It tells you about the performance of the vehicle. It says uh, 5.7 metres by 2.2 metres in width, height of 2.7 metres, 
wheelbase 3.6 meters with a Chevrolet six cylinder 3.9 liter engine producing 83 horsepower. It doesn't sound very much, does it? Top speed of 77 kilometers an hour. So what's that, about 50 mile an hour? I guess that's enough, isn't it, really? Range of 400 kilometers, so that's about 300 miles, isn't it? Thereabouts. Okay, good. And it tells you that there's a paint set here, uh, number 3037, which gives you leather brown, deep brown, and gun metal. Pom uh, pom pom. Is that all that's included? 337? Yeah, the complete paint set, 3037 or 3005. Ah, it's two choices. Uh, and you can use the separate colours, they're all detailed clearly here, very helpfully. Excellent. So, oops. So, right, okay. So here we go, it starts off with their usual um, sprue tree map, so to speak, showing the items they're going to be using. It looks like you're going to use everything that's on here because nothing seems to be deleted. Looks very promising this one, I've got to say. Oh yes, and then we have a really interesting one showing all the figures sprue on its own. Looks like they've got some interesting weapons, a, a Durand rifle and a Thompson machine gun and looks like a 50 cal. Excellent. So it starts off in the instructions with your leaf springs going in onto the side plates of the chassis and then you're building up the box section for the, I think it's the rear, rear or front? I'm not quite sure. Uh, I think it's the front where the engine's going to be supported here. Um, quite a lot of uh, supports and cross members of course going in. And then you build up the opposite side and with, along with the cross members and supports on that side that are going to support things like the mudguards. You then eventually bring that all together, the two sides down here. And then we've got parts of what looks like the transaxle. Um, and then you've got the fuel tank going in here. And looks like it's the gearbox. And then the engine's being constructed here. The V8, isn't it? Two cylinders here? No, six cylinders, sorry. My mistake. Uh, and we've got a knickers in a bit of a twist, didn't we? A bit of confusion about the, um, the gym staff car because it had, it had eight. Something very strange about it. It had eight ports for the engine which I didn't quite get my head around. I'm not sure whether it was a generic um, moulding, <coughs> excuse me, moulding. It just seemed a bit odd. Anyway, six under, straight six here. And your alternator going in on the side, that's quite clear there. And all sorts of interesting parts. Um, you've got your um, ignition rotor, uh, Distributor is the word I'm looking for. The distributor, that looks very cool. And then we've got the fan at the front. A bit more. Fan at the front and the fan belts, obviously. And then you've got your uh, drive shaft at the rear. Um, it's like a trans shaft, isn't it? Transfer shaft. Uh, it looks quite good, this. I, I like the look of the way they've done this. It's looking... This is nice and clear. The instructions seem a lot clearer than that car I complained about. No problems here. And you've got your brakes, brake discs going on there, uh, and it's your differential at the back, isn't it? There, going in with your drive prop shaft, main prop shaft coming in, and then again, uh, the, the front one, the front one, yes, the front one uh, is ahead of the engine, of course. So the engine actually sits in the middle on this, I didn't realize that. So the engine sits pretty much underneath the driver. Now, I didn't know that. I thought it was up front. It's almost like a mid-engine layout. How oh, interesting. I wonder if they were popular. And then you've got various supports that are going in to meet the chassis. Uh, yeah, look at that. You've got the engine sits, it kind of sits in the middle. Or is that the gearbox? No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. Clear this up now. It's not the engine. The engine sits at the front, as you'd expect. It's the gearbox and transfer um, shafts that they it then transfers back and forth to... Uh, the differential at the front and the one at the back. Okay, I think we've got it. <laughs> sometimes sometimes it's not that obvious, you know. Uh, it's an interesting layout though, it means that there's a good weight distribution of the vehicle, doesn't it? So they've spread the weight around instead of having it all at the front, they've kind of put that, that gearbox in the middle and they're just a straight drive shaft out of the engine basically. Uh, to like a transfer box. It's a transfer box, isn't it? 
Anyway, I'm digressing. So then we've got like a, I think it's a battery compartment on the side. And we've got the uh, foot plates on uh, both sides for access. And then we've got the uh, carburetor. That's good, isn't it? And the carburetor with the air filter going on. Uh, going after the engine there. And then you're building up your cabin with your dashboard. Another decal there for the instruments. And then we've got uh, an option of different, well, it's different gear shifters, isn't it? I think one's putting it into all wheel drive. And I think it'll be rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. And that's why you have this transfer box, of course. And then you've got your um, steering wheel going on and the steering column. You've got your seats going in. You've got the back, uh, back of the cabin there with the window going on and the roof going on here. And then you've got your doors being constructed. They go onto the cabin. And then you've got your, just like the brake system, the brake master, master cylinder going on there. Here. And you've got the ventilation uh, flap that conduct air into the cabin. And then that goes onto the chassis. And then you actually uh, sort of finish off the engine. You've got the starter motor there. Uh, it's quite it's quite nice to be able to spot things, actually understand what these parts are, which on modern cars you can't understand anything. <laughs> Maybe I'm just too old school. And then you've got anti-roll bars on the suspension here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of crude but rugged, isn't it, that suspension setup? Leaf springs, but anti-roll bars. And torsion bar, isn't it? That, that's a torsion bar here. You can make that out. Part of the anti-roll and... Uh, Shock assistant. It's kind of a combination of very old school cart springs, effectively, almost, and modern suspension combined. And then we've got a big radiator going on the front, and we've got the side panels, uh, cowls for the engine, uh, and then you've got your lower uh, mud guards, uh, wheel arches, I should say. Uh, same on the other side, you've got the Chevrolet badge on the side there. And then you've got your protective grille that goes on the front to protect the radiator, stones, etc. And then we've got the, the bonnet, spare tyre that goes behind. And then you're building up your structure for the actual uh, load platform area behind. And there's quite, just, you know, there's quite a bit of this. So you've got basically what is a, it's like a pickup in effect, isn't it, really? It's like a great big pickup truck. And then you're going to put some uh, side supports in, complete with hooks for tarpaulins here. That go over the top, and you've got your rear and your front section going on. Drop down, uh, like a flap at the back. And then you've got the supports which come up here that are going to be uh, like a framework uh, for the tarpaulin to go over the top. And that goes in onto the sides. And then you've got these cross members that are going to support the floor. Uh, underneath the floor, because we've now, we now turned it upside down. This is one thing that's not always that clear on our friends from I ICM. It doesn't have any written word, and this is where those videos come in so invaluably. So what you've got here is you've, you've got it the right way up, and then you flipped it upside down, but it doesn't really tell you that. Can you see what I mean? That's the right way up, and that's now upside down. It, there's nothing to say so, and it's a little bit confusing visually. Um, but it's but it's visually clear it, 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 once you've got that in that concept in your head. Uh, but there's just no sort of arrow showing. I don't know if they'd have done an arrow showing it inverted. That would have been helpful. Anyway, then you've got your uh, basically mud flaps are going on here, and then you've got the supports for what's going to be the exhaust, I think. Uh, yep, indeed, and then you've got uh, the rear, uh, the sort of rear uh, valance which holds the lights and things going on. And then you've got the connecting point to where it, where it all slots onto the, the main chassis there. And then once that's in, you've got these uh, support arms for the mudguards. You've got your wheels and tyres coming together here. And then you obviously they're like a two a twin bolted through, aren't they? Like a modern truck where you've got twin uh, twin wheels in inboard outboard. 
style. Then you've got these great big uh, wheel nuts going in the middle, and then those are all going in in their relative positions. Wheel nuts go on. Then you've got your support side sections going on your flat bed, and then you've got the hoop rings that are going to go over the top to support the tarpaulin to keep the weather off. And then you're building up your lights. And you've got a uh, windscreen, sorry, door handles, I'm big fan, door handles on, it, on each side, lights on each side. Then the windscreen goes in. And yeah, there are windscreen wipers, I just got a bit ahead of myself, there they are. And I think these are windscreen wipers that I think they are operated manually by the driver or the co driver, and they just operate them with a the handle basically. Uh, and then we've got the mirrors going on, these rather extended stalks on the side of the door. Just ahead of the door. Uh, and then again it shows a different variant of windscreen wiper, interestingly. Ah, oh, these, are, these are more outboard. first ones were quite... Where are they? C8, C8. No, they're just a different length of wiper. They seem to be different lengths. I think they sit on a different side as well. In the park position. And then you've got these little, um, the windscreen flips open. You can actually drive without the screen for ventilation in hot countries like Italy or wherever. So you can end up with the windscreen wide open. quite, And it's propped up by these props, uh, like a stay. Looks quite good, doesn't it, that? That's quite tempting to build it like that, frankly. And then we've got the colour call out. So we've got nice, oh, traditional olive green. Nothing to see here, is there? It's a bit like an F-15 Eagle aircraft. They have um, uh, gunship grey, well we have olive green for these vehicles. But then, um, and again, it's a little bit rudimentary in the way ICM showed the figures, they don't, in terms of building them, they don't go into a lot of detail, and they combine the colour call out with the actual, in the black number is the actual part number. Could be better, actually, that, I think. Um, but anyway, it's clear enough, and it's not complicated to figure out, as long as you, you follow the the right parts, and get the parts together first and don't mix them up, you'll be fine. And there we have it. Um, and obviously there's some weapons I think that are going to be lying around uh, in the back. Clear in the colours makes that fairly, it's fairly, fairly easy to follow I think in the end of the day. It's just not, perhaps not the best for a beginner. Um, I have to say that it looks really nice and I think this is going to maybe be better than the, the Ural truck which was, which was still a nice kit. Huh? I thought it was a really nice kit. Um, just one or two, just one or two things I maybe think is a bit older, a bit of an older kit. I think I'll start with the the figures. Let's have a look. Don't forget when you're watching this, folks, that if you would like to have me donate this kit to you, uh, my preferred way of doing that is, is just a straight. I'll send it to you, as long as you pay for the postage. Um, and then you can have it free of charge. I just ask you to use your conscience and maybe make a donation to Ukraine, any of the Ukraine charities, your call really. Uh, I think that would be a nice way to sort of repay ICM for their kindness and sending them to me. Let's have a look at this though. I think we have got some extra special figures here. Look at this. Now then. Oh yes, look at the Thompson machine gun. 45 cal. What a nice bit of moulding that is. I'm not sure my glasses are doing it justice. I think it's better on the camera. They've done that nicely, haven't they? They've got some lovely figured hands. Helmet. And then we've got the uh, sapper's uh, trenching tool. One that sticks out the pouch. It's not just for sappers, it's for all soldiers if they need to dig a foxhole, of course. I think that's an M1 Durand rifle. Very nice. Very nice figures, aren't they? Those hands are nice, aren't they? Yeah, they've gone and got those really crisp. Whoops, sorry, wrong way. Yeah, that's cool. And then on the other side, we've got the, I think it's the 50 cal. 50 cal or 30 cal, I'm not quite sure. Then we've got to run the rifle again. And we've got ammunition belt here for the 50 cal. Let's call it. <laughs> and then there's another Duran rifle over on the other side. Upside down. There we go. Duran rifle. Around, I should say. 
I always want to pronounce it with a D for some reason. I think that's wrong. It's a G, isn't it? Um, and then you've got the actual figures themselves. Now look at the detail here. Look at, look at the side lacing on the boots. That's really, really good. Yeah, I like that. You've got the faces. Some really nice detail on the, the torso there, the tunic. We've got the guy's head. Yeah, they're very like the Tamiya style, aren't they? These are good. Very good. And yeah, there are several uh, different bodies, of course. And you've got the driver's legs here. Oops, there. Uh, because the driver's sitting down in the cab, of course. And yeah, some really nice figures there. Pretty much, pretty much flash free. And again, you've got the faces. Oops, lost it. Where are we? Over here. I've lost my spots. There we go for the face. Yeah. Those are those are nice figures. Super, super, super. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a big fan of ICM's figures. As I said, I've got the 48 scale. Uh, quite a few of the Luftwaffe ones that are for the airfield. Airfield in winter, I think one's called. And uh, and I've got the sort of summer of 41 style uh, Western Front. And it's got Adolf Galland or someone that looks very like him. <laughs> and that's a cracking kit of figures. But, so, nothing wrong with them. Absolutely great. So, where's the... Okay. It's one of these where they go from uh, across the back, could have been a tiny bit bigger. <laughs> it's hard to spot the end. Okay. Oh, lovely parts. This is a nice kit. And this is one of the new ones, of course. This is a brand new tool for 2023. So have a look at these. Very crisp parts here. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the parts, you've got the, um, the handbrake there, here. Oops, there, handbrake. And you've got, you've got um, brace bar, gear change, I think that's the gear change underneath. Um, you've got your braking system, I think that is. I think I'm right, so that's the brake reservoir. You've got your fan here. Um, you've got those little wheel discs, brake discs here. Uh, da -da, there's the fan belt. Oops, fan belt there in the middle. Complete with pulleys. Uh, gosh, they're very tiny, these parts, aren't they? Really nice. I like those. Then we have got a big sprue here with lots of parts on it. So we've got some of the transaxle and the transfer axle uh, here. Differential, I should say. Yeah, we've got differential there. We've got parts of the uh, transfer box here. Another differential there. No, it's on the side of the differential. Over here we've got the, um, the bonnet, the back of the cab, nicely moulded. Got the uh, instrument panel here, dashboard, and then we've got the doors. Go this way. The doors, which are very very nice, and then you've got the very nice uh, cowling on the engine. The Chevrolet logo on it. I don't know if you can make that out. Chevrolet. See it? Let's try that way. Let's see a little bit clearer on the side. It does look a bit more sharp on that side, I've got to say. Chevy, Chevrolet. Very nice. Um, you've got the the protector uh, gr grill at the front of the grate on the front of the from the radiator and the lights and then you've got your engine over here 
Um, yeah, that's a really nice sprue. Very, very sharp, crisp, free of flash. Absolutely nothing not to like there. Then we've got a twin sprue that's the same, so let's get one of them out. And it's the one with all the sort of wheels and the sort of bumper bars on it and things like that. Uh, well, sorry, it's the, sorry, the, not bumper bars, they're the hoops that support the tarpaulin uh, on the top. And you've got the sort of uh, the, uh, the wooden section that's the, uh, the front of the crew compartment behind on the flat bed. You've got some absolutely lovely moulding with these tyres, look at these. Now this is a state-of-the-art latest tool kit and it, it's definitely looking like it. You can see the difference, irrespective of size, of scale. You can see that this is a much improved kit over that Ural truck, uh, which I think was an older kit, an older tool. Because this is much sharper, much crisper, and it's got a lot more detail in here. Yeah, fantastic. Another nice sprue, that one. Okay, then a lot of the big parts now. So it's a lot of the uh, like the floor for the flatbed, etc., and some of the side sections here, and the suspension and stuff like that. So there's the floor, flatbed floor, as you can see. And then you've got this uh, the side sections I mentioned, and the lean against and the flatbed. You've got the side of your chassis here, and then the other side of it is here. Leaf springs here. Steering wheel, good old Chevy steering wheel here. <laughs> and then you've got lots of little components that are things like the drive shafts here. Exhaust system is over here. silencer. Uh, more of these drive shafts and transfer shafts that go to the differential from the transfer box. That's a really nice kit I've got to say. It's a, a lovely little truck. It's almost gecko like isn't it? It's that sort of standard. Um, actually gecko of sort. I mentioned gecko. They kind of escaped my wrath when I was complaining about instructions because they don't they don't have the best either, do they? Anyway, nice nice moulded plastic though. It's faultless, isn't it? This it's um, pretty nice. It's a really nice truck. Any of the truck fans amongst you, like people like James Moore, etc., um, and many many others, <laughs> they're going to love this. I think they are. They're really going to like it because it's an absolute peach. I'm going to pop that in there and see if I can return it to the bag and then we'll have a look at the clear parts now. On the little Ural truck which we just discussed as not being the latest uh, tooling, at least I don't think it is because it's not, it didn't seem that great, I've got to be honest in that the clear parts were a bit of a let down on it, if I'm being honest. But it's the weakest part of the model kit. We will see how we get on here. With this one, with our clear parts, see what we got. So, uh, ICM do do some lovely clear parts, so I'm hoping for better things. Ah, oh, this is better, this is much better. This is more like it. Yeah, maybe not the absolute perfection of Tamiya, but that's a nice piece of clear, clear sprue. Let's try and give you the reflections. Yes, there is some very minor, tiny distortion. It's not, you know, like bullseye lenses like, <laughs> like we had in the little Ural truck. Just had some issues that did. This is much, much finer. Yeah, it's really quite, quite nice. That, that's very sharp and bright and crystal-like as well. There we go. And you can see there is some minor distortion, especially on one of that, that left, as you're looking at it on the left. Uh, I, think, I think it's the passenger door window. But you can always leave them out if you don't fancy it, because they often had them wound down anyway, so... Hotter countries they tend to run around with the windows down. 
in good weather. And of course, you can have the uh, windscreen open anyway. You can have it, you know, lifted up like that. But honestly, I think that's um, that's pretty decent clear parts. Uh, I'm not going to grumble about them really and knock any points off of that. It looks very nice, really. So where are we at then? Well, I like this one a lot more than the Ural truck. I've got to say, um, I think it's not just because it's bigger, it just feels a lot more. More attention to detail, sharper moulding, crisp, almost sort of Tamiyar or rifle like, which is a compliment, you know. Where are we at with it then? I like this one, I like this one. Uh, tiniest criticism in the instructions of the two bits that weren't that clear, but yeah, I think I don't exaggerate that too much. I like that a lot. I think it's very, very nice indeed. I'm going to give it nine and a half out of ten um, because it's it's a real corker. I think you can build that, especially the fact it's got figures with it as well. I like I having mean, figures included. I do so nine and a half out of ten for me. Hope you'll give me ten out of ten with a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Ding the notification bell and. I just want to say thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found it interesting. Don't forget that I am um, going to donate most of these kits that I have, um, probably including that one. So if you're interested, drop me a message. Um, and I say, all I'd ask in return is A, you pay the postage cost, that's all. I'm not making any profit on the postage, just whatever it costs. And that you maybe then make a little donation to Ukraine to help, and um, that would be cool. Thank you very much. In the meantime, we have some more interesting reviews coming up, I'm sure. Don't miss them. Make sure that you are fully alerted and thank you for joining me. Till next time, thanks a lot. Look after yourselves and bye for now.